Jared Leto is here tonight. Hey, Jared, how are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. God, I appreciate your energy, brother. I'm so brother. happy you're here. It's lovely to see your face. Thank Where you, in the world you, you. are you talking to us from? Uh, I am in the great state of Nevada. I've been spending some time here rock climbing. They have like phenomenal rock climbing here. So that's where I'm, I'm zooming in from. I, I heard about your rock climbing. Is this true? You go rock climbing with, you go with the guy from Free Solo. Yeah, with Alex Honnold. Uh, he, he is a, a, a great rock climbing uh, partner and a good friend. And we've had lots of fun adventures together. We just climbed uh, three days ago here. It's the most Jared Leto thing I've ever heard. <laughs> because of course, of course, when you go rock climbing, you go with the uh, only rock climber anyone's <laughs> ever heard of. <laughs> so do you climb yeah. without ropes? I mean, when sometimes you have to climb without ropes. It's part of part of the gig. But uh, you know, a lot most of the time I'm climbing with ropes. Uh, and uh, yeah. But you know, you do what what it takes to accomplish the goal, and we have a lot of fun doing it. Um, we did almost die here a couple of years ago, him and I. Uh, but uh, beyond that, it's been it's been a blast. What happened? Well, beyond that, it's been a blast. <laughs> <laughs> how did you how did you almost die? What happened? Well, it's funny because I actually went to the spot. Um, uh, I went to the spot. It was on a climb called Spectrum. Oh yeah, I know the Red climb. Rock. Yeah, you know, you know. You know yeah, the climb I know the Spectrum, Spectrum climb. Yeah. Jeez, I wouldn't do that yeah. without a rope, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, I went back there to kind of get revenge on the on the climb, and then uh, a huge rock broke off uh, right underneath my foot, and one with uh, the person who who was climbing with me again, another hole broke off just a few <gasps> days ago, so maybe that route is a little cursed. But when I was there a few years ago with Alex Honnold, um, I took a fall about 600 feet up and kind of swung out over the abyss, and my rope just happened. It was like a perfect storm. My rope was coming over the edge, and as I swung, it just went pop, 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 and the, <gasps> rope, the rope started to cut, and I swung back, and I managed to grab a hold of the wall and get on, but the rope was just fried. It was almost uh, ripped to shreds. So now it's a... <laughs> it was still it was still a great day. We had a great climb was after it... that. And... Was it though? Because at that moment I would be like, <laughs> I think I'm done with this now. I think I'm gonna <laughs> Does Uber work up here? I'd be because it can me ask you about this rock climbing. Is yeah. it worth the stress <laughs> when you get there and then you're like, ah, oh, there we go. Let's go back down, I guess. Yeah, it, it is. Sometimes you have that thought when you're in the middle of it. You're like, um, I'm a grown man and I'm climbing a rock. Uh, but, you know, some people do Taibo. So, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty good option. I want to talk to you about this. You, I know that you recently just moved. And during yeah. the move, is this true that you've misplaced your Oscar? Have you found it yet? Yeah, you know, it, I found out that it's been missing for like three years, uh, <laughs> and I didn't—I didn't know that. I don't think anyone wanted to tell me, uh, but I had moved house in LA, and uh, and then when we moved, it somehow just magically kind of disappeared. So it it could be somewhere, but everyone searched for it high and low, and uh, you know, I hope it's in good hands wherever it is. But uh, yeah, we haven't seen it for quite some time. Hang on, you really think somebody else has got it? I think it's a good possibility. It's not the sort of thing someone accidentally throws in the trash. <laughs> so, you know, I hope someone is caring for it. I remember the night that I got it, I passed it around to so many people. You, you know, it was I, I didn't see it half the night. The things beat up and scratched up, but you know, people had fun taking pictures with it and stuff. And I don't know, it's, it's nice to share it. So hopefully, someone's taking good care of it. How have you, I imagine for you, Jared, that, that like, I imagine lockdown's quite an adjustment for you because I know that you, you, you're, you love going, you love touring, and when you tour with the band, you, you tour for an incredibly long time. When you're on a movie, you're committed to it in the, in the preparation towards it, the, the filming of it. You're not really a fan of sort of a massive amount of off days. Have you 
how have you adjusted to spending this amount of time at home? No, I, I think you're right. I like to work a lot. I like to be productive. And, you know, I've spent the last 20 years basically on tour when I'm not on tour making a film. So this was the first time in my life that I've ever been in one place for this amount of time. It's the first life, time in my life I've ever had really a routine. And I, I, I got to say, I, I really appreciate it. I, it's a beautiful thing. I've been working on music a lot. I've written over 100 songs. Wow. And we've been preparing for a couple of films that we're about to go do this Gucci movie with uh, Lady Gaga and uh, Ridley Scott and Al Pacino, an amazing cast, uh, Adam Driver. Uh, we're about to go do that in Italy, and then we have a couple more things we're doing this year um, on the acting front. So it's been an awesome time just to reflect and to be simple and to like you know, um, to to just to kind of shut down the noise. Uh, you know, I think all of us realize that we don't need to be doing as many things as we thought we needed to do. Uh, yeah. So the simple life. That's my point. I mean, you, I know that you, you talked about music then. You collaborated with Phineas, uh, who I'm, yeah. I'm a huge fan of. Uh, and I know that you've known him and his sister Billy like, since they started making music together. How did you meet that family? Did you know right away that they were, that they were something special? Absolutely. I met them through Emma Ludbrook and Tom Windish, I believe. You know, they weren't signed. And I thought that maybe maybe I would sign, try and sign them. They were, they, were, they were so incredibly talented and just special people. You know, the music is one thing, but I think they just incredibly intelligent, really empathetic, just really good people, you know? Uh, and and I'm, I, I, I quite like them a lot. Um, but uh, it, it, anyway, at, at one point they played at my house. They, I had a little dinner for like 12 people and I said, hey, will you guys come and play a couple of songs? And they were like, yeah, sure. And they showed up with like a guitar center PA and played the most heartbreakingly beautiful music with like, you know, it shouldn't have sounded that good. It was impossible that it sounded that good. But they played there. I remember Leo uh, DiCaprio was there and a couple other people and they were just like, how did you find these people? <laughs> and like, who are they? Everyone was just jaws on the floor, 12 people max. Uh, at my place in, in the hills. And uh, yeah, just, just great people. I'm huge fans too. You posted this photo recently. Look at, look <laughs> at little Jared Leto here. Look at this. How old are you here? I'm interested to know what kind of stuff was this guy into? Oh, let me tell you, as, as innocent as I may look there, I, I, like, I definitely had at least an ounce of weed in my system. <laughs> I'm sure, and I would have sold you a dime bag or two. Ah! Definitely. <laughs> I, I used it to my advantage, uh, <laughs> for sure. But I had on a Rush shirt. You know the band yes, Rush? Of course. Yeah, the best. Uh, so I had on a Rush uh, shirt there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that was like seventh or eighth grade. I had just come from, I used to live in Haiti for a little while, very short time when I was a kid. I lived in Haiti. And I came back to the States and that, I had the, the, the mullet. I remember I cut my hair uh, myself. I mean, you, now I look at the photo, you do look like you might be quite stoned. If you really go in on uh, the yeah. eyes, I can see it. Oh, yeah. And look, what a, ch look at, look, a cherub there and look at the cherub you are now. Now, we have to yeah. talk about your new movie, The Little Things, the most incredible cast. You, Rami Malek, Denzel Washington, for anyone who doesn't know, tell them what it's about and who you play. Well, it's, this, it's a classic American crime thriller that subverts the genre, keeps you guessing, makes you ask a lot of questions. It can be quite scary at times and uh, very surprising. Uh, I play a guy named Albert Sparma, who, as you can tell from the name, is a very, he's a different kind of guy. It's a very transformative performance. You know, I have a different color eyes, a different nose, different yeah. teeth, a different way of walking and talking. And I really, really dove in uh, deep. And I, I, I use it, for me, it was like an exercise to see how far I could go as far as the physical transformation and, uh, and a great opportunity to work with one of my, the, the heroes of my life, uh, the great Denzel Washington. I mean, you look like you're having great fun with this character. Yeah. How... Talk to me about how deep you got into this character. What was your preparations for such a role? 
It was pretty intense. And, um, you know, I, I, I knew it was an opportunity. Uh, it was a challenge. I certainly didn't want to show up on the set with Denzel Washington and not be more than prepared. Um, and I wanted to take advantage of that experience of working with him. Um, so I dove in really deep. There was a lot of, you know, when you do these things, you become kind of a detective. Uh, it, it, you do a lot of research, you hit a lot of dead ends, you fail a lot, you experiment a lot. You know, I, I was studying FBI transcripts, seeing things and reading things that people probably should never uh, look at uh, uh, and not for very long if they do. Um, so it was very dark, but the nice thing was he had this really bizarre sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, and he, li he liked to keep people off balance with his sense of humor. So that was a bit of an antidote for the darkness. And I, I really enjoyed that element of surprise and all the ad lib and improvisation that, that came along with that. Well, like so many of your performances, you're so brilliant in this film. You really, really are.